Uh, hi guys, so uh, thank you so much for you know joining this talk. Uh, so I'll be speaking on you know Coil, uh, uh, which is for an Android uh, image loading library, and I guess uh, uh, few of you must be aware about this library. Uh, so uh, you know uh, the idea of this talk came into my mind when I was you know contributing to this library, and I had to go through the entire library, how it works under the hood. So I thought it's a good idea to you know share uh, some nice uh, insights about this library. So if you are uh, into open source uh, and planning to you know contribute uh, to this library, I think this talk will give you nice uh, insights about this library, how it works. Uh, we'll cover uh, you know uh, uh, image loading pipeline and caching mechanism. Uh, if you are not into open source, uh, however, like it's it's a good idea uh, to you know know your library. Uh, if you are planning to use a uh, coil in your project or uh, you know uh, already using, I think it's a good idea to uh, know how library works under the hood. So before we start, a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Sagar Viradia. I'm Android engineer at uh, Book My Show currently, and I'm also a Google developer expert for Android. Uh, I'm also part of uh, this community, uh, GDG Mad. Uh, so uh, on the Bottom right corner, you can see our Twitter handle at the GVG Mad and our website. So you can visit uh, that uh, for our upcoming events uh, and if you want to know more about us. Uh, also, I'm active on Twitter, so you can follow me on Twitter uh, on the bottom left corner. That's my Twitter handle. So if you have any question after this talk, uh, perhaps you can reach out to me on Twitter. So uh, yeah, with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, uh, yeah, before that, slides. Are available on this URL. You can scan this QR code or go to the short URL beneath. Uh, I'll just keep it for a few seconds, uh, and then we can start. All right. Uh, let's get started. So. Uh, what we'll be discussing today. Uh, so we'll be uh, first focusing on what is Coil exactly, uh, why you should consider this library, and then uh, we'll see like how you can use this library. We'll cover APIs uh, for Java and Kotlin, and uh, later on we'll deep dive into you know the pipeline itself, and finally we'll touch upon you know the in-memory caching. So let's start. Uh, what is Coil? So Coil is an acronym for you know coroutine image loader, and you must have guessed like uh, by the name like it has support for you know coroutine. Uh, under the hood, it uses coroutine uh, uh, to you know offload uh, image loading on a separate thread, uh, and also it has API to you know give you uh, flexibility to use within coroutine. So if you if you want to load image uh, within your coroutine context, that is also possible. And you must be wondering, like, why we need another library? Because there are a couple of options out there, and they are working. Uh, Fresco, Glide, and Picasso, all are, you know, image loading library. And why we need another library for Android? Uh, well, there are a couple of couple of reasons for that. Uh, 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 to you know, consider this library if you are a Kotlin user. This is Kotlin uh, first library. It has support for coroutine and uh, you know recently uh, support for Jetpack Compose also came. Uh, so if you're planning to start something from scratch uh, in Kotlin or you are already using Kotlin in your code base, I think uh, it's, it's good to consider this library. Uh, uh, so let's just see like the advantage of this library uh, over you know other libraries and. Also, uh, uh, library has nice uh, documentation. Uh, you can check out uh, that, uh, and it will help you to migrate if you are using one of this library, Picasso or uh, you know, uh, Glide. So you can use a migration guide to uh, migrate to this library. So why Coil? Um, well, uh, a couple of reasons uh, to consider this library. Uh, it's, it's a modern library. Uh, so modern in the sense like uh, it has support for coroutine. Also, recently, Jetpack Compose support came uh, uh, officially uh, for this library. And under the hood, it uses modern uh, libraries. Uh, 
things like it depends on you know okay http for disk caching uh, and uh, it uses uh, lifecycle component of uh, jetpack uh, compo uh, jetpack uh, library uh, to you know figure out when it should cancel the request the ongoing request if view is out of scope so in that in, in that sense it's a, it's a modern library uh, and it's easy to use uh, so it has nice api for you know kotlin since it's a kotlin first library uh, we'll see that in upcoming slides but uh, it's, it's easy to use api is fairly simple uh, even for java user uh, it follows builder pattern the sort of like you uh, must be aware like the builder pattern that most of the library uses to you know initialize something it's the same thing here uh, it uses uh, utilizes uh, you know builder pattern and it has a nice api for java as well um, also, it is lightweight uh, compared to other libraries. Uh, so, coil as around 2000 method, if I'm not wrong. Uh, if you are already depending on uh, coroutine and OKHTP. Uh, and the fact that this library gives you uh, so many features compared to others, uh, it's, it's a good library uh, uh, with uh, you know less uh, memory footprint. Uh, and it's fast. So. Uh, basically, library performs a lot of uh, optimization when it comes to image loading. It has, uh, you know, the in-memory caching support. Uh, also, uh, it does uh, downsampling if you are on the low bandwidth. Uh, so that way, it's, it's very fast to load uh, on the slower network uh, 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 also if you are on the low bandwidth. Um, so, yeah, these are the couple of reasons why you should consider, you know, this library. Uh, Let's uh, move on to uh, how you can uh, use this library, the API part. Um, so let's just see like how you can utilize this uh, within Java if you're using Java. Uh, code snippets in Kotlin, but uh, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, there's no much difference. So what you do first, uh, you need an image request. Uh, so you create it to build a pattern and you pa pass in all the information that will be required uh, by the library. Things like the data, which is, in this case, it's an image source from where you want to load uh, image. Uh, if you do you want uh, animations, in this case, uh, crossfade uh, or any other animation you can mention. And of course, you need to mention target where you want to load uh, you know, the image. And then you finally call build and it will give you an image request. And uh, the next thing which is important, uh, 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 which is responsible for actually loading, you know, the image is image loader. So library already gives you, you know, a singleton uh, built in. So you don't have to worry about creating unless you are not, uh, you know, customizing stuff. So it's recommended to use one uh, which is library already uh, providing you, but you can always create your own uh, and manage your own singleton. Uh, so it, it, again, it's a, if you're a Kotlin user, you can directly call a context dot image loader. It's, it's an extension on uh, context. Uh, but if you're a Java user, you just have to call coil kt dot, uh, you know, the image loader and you have to pass uh, uh, context and it will give you an image loader. Um, and if you're managing your own uh, image loader, uh, so in this case, we are customizing, you know, the in-memory cache uh, percentage that library will use. In this case, 25%. Uh, things like this, if you want to customize, then you have to manage your own, uh, you know, image load. And uh, finally, you have to call, uh, you know, NQ on image loader and pass in the image request, uh, and it will give you a disposable, uh, and that will give you flexibility to cancel uh, ongoing request. Uh, in case if you, for some reason, if you want to cancel, but uh, uh, that is not mandatory. Library will do uh, that for uh, you automatically. But in case if you want manual control, that is also possible. Uh, coming to like so far, whatever we have seen, like that was uh, for Java user, but the, for Kotlin user, like library has nice, uh, you know, extension function on top of image view. Uh, and it does a lot of heavy lifting for you, creating image request and you know passing that to image uh, loader. So you just have to call the load function on the image view and pass in your uh, image source. So it could be URL, it could be resource, it could be file. 
And uh, if you want to further customize things like animation and transformation and placeholder, that is possible. That is also possible through trailing Lambda. And uh, this is nothing but Lambda with receiver on you know the image request that we saw previously. So under the hood, it will create uh, you know image request for you and feed that to uh, image loader, so you don't have to worry about that. So this way, for Kotlin user, it's just a nice, uh, you know, clean and concise API, easy to understand. Uh, also, it has support for coroutine, as I already mentioned, uh, imperative style. Uh, if you want to load image uh, synchronously, that is also possible. Uh, notice here the image request that we are creating. We are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, configuring the target because we are not loading uh, image asynchronously uh, to the target. Uh, we are just creating the request and then calling the execute instead of uh, NQ. And uh, execute is a suspend function that will suspend the execution of your coroutine and it will give you uh, the result back and you can utilize that uh, later. Uh, and this is one of the feature that recently came in uh, in the 1.3.0 version of this library, the support for you know Jetpack Compose. Uh, all you need to do is uh, you can call the image uh, composable function and pass in the remember image painter, uh, uh, you know, uh, method call that will give you painter. And uh, essentially this function will create the painter object and that painter object is responsible for heavy lifting for you it will under uh, under the hood it will create the image request and you know it, it will execute uh, uh, it so users have to call this uh, and uh, along with this uh, if you need uh, some padding or stuff like that uh, you can uh, configure that as well and uh, again if you need transformation or crossfade uh, that is also possible uh, so uh, through the builder block that this function also receives uh, that's an optional parameter. So in case if you want uh, transformation and animation, tra transformation and animation, yeah, uh, you can do that uh, through the builder block. Uh, all right. So yeah, that's all about that Compose. Coming to the actual pipeline itself, uh, this is the entire pipeline. And as you can see, like there are various uh, stages. Uh, so let's go over them one by one at high level and then we'll see them in detail. So very first thing, you as a library user, you have to create uh, you know, the image request and pass in that to image loader that we already saw previously. And it will hand over stuff to interceptors. Uh, it's a similar concept of uh, you know, the OK HTTP interceptor. Here, uh, it'll give you a chance to you know, intercept the image request uh, in case if you want to do uh, uh, something before pipeline actually kicks in. Yeah, this is your chance. Uh, to do that. Then it will hand over stuff to mappers in case if you have, uh, if you provided any custom mappers, uh, it will execute uh, them. And the mappers are nothing but, uh, you know, uh, objects that will allow you to map your own custom data type uh, to the image source, the actual image source. So we'll see in upcoming slides in detail uh, what it is exactly. And uh, finally, we'll hand over stuff to fetchers. Uh, fetchers are nothing but actual fetcher responsible for fetching your image uh, from the source that you provide. Uh, so it could be file uh, object or it could be content URI or it could be network uh, URL. And uh, based on the data source, it will figure out the right fetcher for you and uh, you know uh, it will hand over uh, request to fetcher. Fetcher will uh, fetch uh, in case uh, if you provide a local resource, uh, there's no need to decode, so it will just spit out, uh, you know, drawable. Uh, but in case uh, if it is not local resource, uh, it will convert uh, your uh, uh, email source into, you know, a buffered source, uh, which is think of it as, you know, intermediate form that uh, decoder will consume uh, to, you know, decode the image. So it will uh, give the buffered source uh, to decoder, and it will uh, decode the uh, buffer source will convert it to you know drawable and uh, in case if you have been, uh, mentioned any transformation uh, in the request it will execute uh, them uh, transformation is nothing but you know uh, 
uh, it'll modify the pixel data for you. So in case uh, if you want to apply filter or you know uh, circle crop transformation or rounded border, it'll just apply them and uh, give you the final uh, image uh, as an image result. And uh, image result is a seed class. Uh, so there could be two possibility. It could be success result and error result depending on uh, the, the execution of your pipeline. If something wrong, it will just give you the error result. All right, so let's uh, go, uh, you know, uh, each uh, component, uh, let's visit them in detail. Uh, let's, uh, uh, you know, see them in detail. So the image loader, uh, so it's a service class responsible for, you know, executing and managing the entire pipeline. Uh, so this is the class basically, which is responsible for, you know, kickstarting the entire pipeline. Uh, and this is something that consumer, uh, you know, uses to kickstart the uh, image loading. Uh, and it takes, as we saw, a image request as a parameter. Uh, and as I already mentioned, coil gives you, you know, singleton, which is recommended. Uh, uh, because like this object is quite heavy and it will be responsible for managing your entire pipeline. It will allocate memory for the upcoming steps that we'll be seeing uh, and also it will allow you know memory for in-memory caching so be careful like if you create multiple objects of this you'll run out of memory soon uh, based on the device you are running so it's, it's recommended to use singleton if you are managing your own uh, so as we saw uh, earlier like you create the uh, email request to build a pattern you provide all the information uh, your source target and you call the build and you uh, call the NQ and it'll give you a disposable uh, in case if you want to cancel, you know, the EVS request. And also, uh, if you want to uh, load the image asynchronously, uh, that is also possible through execute function, which is nothing but suspend function, uh, suspending function and will set the image request and give you a result back, EVS result. The next thing that will be executed uh, would be uh, interceptor. So interceptors allows you to observe, transform, short circuit, or retry the request. So uh, like it, it, it's your chance to you know wrap your own custom logic within pipeline, and uh, it will get executed before it actually starts uh, you know the entire pipeline. So you can have your own custom logic. Uh, uh, in the pipeline and it will get executed. And as I mentioned, uh, this is inspired from, you know, the OKS HTTP interceptor. It's a similar concept uh, over there. It's just how you can, you know, uh, intercept uh, network requests. It's a similar concept here. You uh, will be able to, you know, intercept the image request. So let's see one example, like uh, what, do we, what do I mean by, you know, interceptor exactly? So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is one of the example of uh, interceptor, uh, which is nothing but uh, you know the own custom cache layer. Uh, 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 and don't confuse uh, this cache layer with the in-memory cache layer that we'll be seeing uh, in the upcoming slides. So this is your chance to, in case if you want to, you know, have your own cache layer, you can do that uh, through uh, interceptor. So uh, as you can see, the constructor is taking construct uh, context and you know the LRU cache implementation. And you have to uh, implement the uh, interceptor uh, interface uh, and this method uh, intercept, uh, which will give you, uh, you know, the chain object that you can use uh, later on in this uh, method. So first, what we are doing is like we are checking whether the current image request is there in the cache or not. If it is, uh, uh, you know, there in the cache, uh, what we are doing is we are just short circuiting the entire pipeline and we are returning uh, from here. So it won't execute the further, uh, simply it will return from here and it will give you the result. Uh, but in case it's not there, uh, you, call, you can call chain.proceed and it will execute the next uh, interceptor. So yeah, it's possible to you know provide multiple interceptor uh, sectors uh, and the, the order in which you provide, it will just execute them one by one. And uh, yeah, this is how you 
plug in your own custom interceptor in case you uh, have uh, that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, like, uh, you know, if you're configuring uh, uh, your custom st uh, uh, stuff, uh, then you have to manage your image loader by your own. So this is how you can create the image loader with, uh, you know, your own custom cache interceptor through component registry. And you can call multiple, uh, uh, you can basically plug in your multiple uh, interceptor and other stuff uh, that you'll see in upcoming slides. And the last thing that will be executed uh, is the engine interceptor. So uh, no matter if you provide, you know, any interceptor or not, uh, this thing will always get executed uh, uh, at the last. Uh, so this is the interceptor from library itself. Uh, and uh, this is actually responsible for, you know, after executing your own uh, interceptor, this will get executed and this will uh, continue the entire image loading pipeline. And uh, it, it is responsible for, you know, querying the in-memory cache uh, of the library. And if the request is already there uh, present in the cache, uh, it will just simply, uh, you know, short circuit the entire pipeline and it won't execute the pipeline further. Coming to mappers, uh, mappers allows you to, you know, add uh, support for custom data types. So let's see one example uh, uh, to understand, you know, mappers, what it is. So uh, let's say you have an item class and then within that you have image URL. Uh, and, uh, you know, essentially what you can do, you can, instead of, uh, you know, passing item.image URL uh, uh, to image uh, request, what you can do, you can pass in this image, uh, uh, sorry, you can pass in this uh, item object uh directly and as long as you have uh, uh, the mapper implementation as long as you uh, uh, you have this implementation library will figure out okay if i get item as a data source i know how to you know extract uh, actual uh, uh, data source uh, from the, uh, the object that you are specifying in this case it's item So uh, instead of yeah, instead of writing uh, item dot image URL, you can just uh, call image view dot load and pass in the item. Uh, and this is very useful uh, uh, when you have you know nested object hierarchies, uh, and uh, your image sources deep down the hierarchy, so you don't have to call you know object dot this dot this dot this, and finally your image source. So you can uh, directly pass. Uh, you know, your top level object and we'll figure out uh, from where uh, it should get the, you know, the image source. And again, this is how you can plug in your own mapper uh, to component registry. The next step would be the fetcher. Uh, so uh, it translates your data into either buffer source or drawable. Uh, depending on your data source that you provide. So in case if it is local resource, it will just spit out uh, drawable directly. If it is some other resource, uh, let's say file or, you know, the uh, HTTP URL, it will just uh, convert that to a buffered source. Uh, that will be consumed by the next step, which is decoder. Um, and library has built-in fetchers. Uh, so these are the few fetchers uh, that library provides asset URI fetcher would be responsible for, you know, uh, if you provide any asset URI, uh, it will just use this fetcher to fetch uh, your image. Content URI, uh, again, uh, if you want to load something from content URI, you uh, library will use this fetcher for you. And uh, file URL and HTTP URL, uh, self-explanatory, like I don't have to explain them. Um, so, Besides all, all uh, fetchers that library provides, if you want to uh, implement your own fetcher, that is also possible. Uh, users have to implement this interface and three methods. The very first method is handles, which gives you uh, the data source and you have to decide, okay, based on the data source, I'm getting whether my fetcher uh, would be able to fetch data or not. So, uh, this will be internally used by library uh, when you give uh, image request to library, it will just query all the fetchers 
and whoever returns true first, uh, it will just use that fetcher. So, uh, you know, based on the data that you're getting, you need to decide, okay, whether you'll be able to uh, fetch uh, uh, these kind of data or not. And based on that, you have to return true or false. Uh, the next thing, the, the next method is key. Uh, key is nothing but, you know, uh, the unique key that will be used by in-memory cache to uniquely identify the network request, uh, sorry, the eBay's request. Uh, and you uh, you need to provide this uh, so that library can uh, next time if you are uh, requesting the same image source in this case the uh, data uh, uh, it will just use that key to query uh, in memory cache and you know see if it is present over there uh, and finally the fetch uh, method which is suspending function uh, which is actually responsible for you know the uh, fetching your uh, image and you have to spit out a uh, fetch result. And it gives you a bitmap pool uh, data size uh, that user wants to load uh, and a bunch of other metadata about the image request, uh, which will be there in the options. And you can you know, fetch your uh, uh, image uh, and spit out the fetch result. Uh, I'm not going to detail like how actually you can fetch. Uh, perhaps you can, uh, you know, go through the built-in fetchers uh, within library and you can figure it out. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'll I'll just uh, leave that to you. Uh, you can, you know, visit uh, inbuilt fetchers and you can figure it out if you want. Um, so yeah, in case if you want to, uh, uh, again. Uh, uh, provide custom fetcher, you just have to implement a fetcher inter interface that we saw and plug in that to, you know, component uh, registry. And uh, finally, uh, you know, the image uh, uh, fetch result uh, will be provided to, you know, decoder, which converts a uh, buffer source uh, to actual drawable. And uh, library has built in, uh, you know, format support, uh, JPEG, PNG, web piece. And also library has, you know, the extensions uh, on top of uh, base. So base will give you JPEG, PNG, web piece. But if you want uh, support for, you know, SVG, uh, GIF uh, and video frames, uh, that is possible through extensions. So instead of depending on the base, you will be depending on the SVG and it will give you uh, you know, the SVG. So let's say if you are depending on the SVG extension, it will give you the SVG as well as uh, all uh, feature from base. And uh, yeah, uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, implement uh, your own custom decoder. You have to implement the decoder interface and uh, these two methods, handles, similar to what we saw uh, previously uh, for the fetcher. Uh, here you'll get a buffer source and line type, and based on that you have to decide whether you will be able to decode, uh, uh, you know, the mind type. Based on the mind type, you'll be able to decode this request or not. And uh, library will internally call this uh, to all the decoders, and whoever returns, you know, to uh, it'll just simply hand over uh, a request for decoding uh, to that decoder. And finally, the last method, uh, the suspend uh, function decode, that, that is uh, where actu uh, uh, actually the magic uh, happens, the actual decoding happens. Uh, so it takes bitmap pool, uh, buffer source, size, and options, and um, you can utilize them and you can uh, decode the actual, uh, you know, the uh, buffer source that you're getting, and you can spit out the decode uh, result. Again, not going to detail about the actual decoding and all. Uh, perhaps you can, uh, you know, go through the current uh, existing decoders uh, in the library. And uh, uh, similarly to, uh, you know, uh, map person in, uh, interceptors that we saw, you can also uh, plug in the decoders uh, to component registry, and library will use that. Uh, to figure out like uh, which decoder it should use in case uh, you are providing your own custom you know data source and uh, that will be decoded by your decoder then it will use this decoder uh, 
then if you if you uh, if you have transformation in your image request it will execute them uh, so it allows you to change the pixel data uh, so it it will allow you to modify the pixel data on the final bitmap uh, things like filter you know rounded corner or circle transformation uh, circle crop transformation uh, that is possible through transformation and uh, these are a bunch of uh, you know inbuilt transformation that library provides blur circle crop grayscale rounded corn. And again, if you need a custom transformation, that is also possible through uh, this interface. You need to implement this interface with two methods, key and uh, transform. So key is similar to what we saw in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, fetch off. So basically, uh, this will combine to that key uh, in case if you are uh, if, uh, in future, if you are re requesting same image request with uh, transformation, uh, it will use this key to uh, query the in memory cache uh, and it will give you the result back. Uh, and uh, uh, the last method is transform, uh, wherein you get the bitmap pool, uh, bitmap, uh, and size, and you, you can utilize uh, that information to spit out the final bitmap with uh, modified pixel data. And again, similar to uh, other components, you can register your transformation through component registry. And finally, it will spit out you know, the image result. Uh, it could be success or error, depending on the execution of your entire pipeline. So yeah, this was all about you know, the entire pipeline and all the uh, various uh, stages in the pipeline. Uh, I want to touch upon threading as well, uh, like where exactly all the steps will get executed. So the interceptor and mappers will be executed on the you know, main thread. And the remaining three fetcher, decoder, and transformation will be executed on the worker thread. And finally, the transition, which is animation, which is not part of pipeline. Of course, that has to happen on you know main thread. Uh, coming to the last part of this talk, uh, you know, uh, in memory caching, uh, before I like, uh, uh, discuss this, I would like to highlight one thing, uh, like, uh, this caching is also supported by this library. Uh, however, I'm not covering that because that is handled by, you know, OKS TDP. So it uses like utilize, uh, you know, OKS to be under the hood to, uh, perform, you know, this caching. So. Uh, you can read about OKS TP disk caching, which is a similar concept. Uh, however, I want to discuss in memory caching today. Uh, so, there are, when it comes to in memory caching, uh, I think most of you must be aware about in, in memory caching, but just quickly, if you are not aware, in memory caching is something that resides in your RAM, and if you clear your app, it will go away. Uh, versus disk caching is permanent. So, next time if you launch app that is available, it will store inside, you know, your local file system. So, in-memory caching. Uh, when it comes to in-memory caching, uh, you know, there are two layers uh, that library provides: the strong memory cache and the weak memory cache. And the strong memory cache is responsible for holding, you know, strong reference of bitmap. And uh, weak memory cache would be responsible for, you know, holding the weak uh, references of your bitmaps. So, if strong memory is full. Uh, uh, Basically, the one which is least recently used uh, would be eligible to uh, move from strong memory cache to you know weak memory cache. Let's see, like wh where uh, exactly uh, in uh, you know the in-memory uh, cache comes in the picture uh, in the pipeline. So as we saw previously, like engine interceptor is last interceptor that would be uh, executed. And before kickstarting the actual pipeline, uh, it will just check whether, you know, uh, based on the request it's getting, like whether it's there in the uh, strong memory cache or not. Uh, if it is there, it will just short circuit the entire call. If not, it will just query, uh, you know, weak memory cache in case weak memory has, uh, you know, this request. Uh, if it has, uh, it will just simply short circuit the entire call. If not, it will just continue executing the entire pipeline. So this is where like in memory cache will come into picture. So engine interceptor will query uh, the in memory cache and figure out whether it should continue or not. 
so going to bit detail about you know strong memory cache uh, it's backed by you know lru cache you must be aware about lru strategy caching uh, strategy uh, so lru is least recently used uh, uh, strategy wherein like the image uh, which is least recently used would be eligible to you know uh, uh, move from strong to uh, weak memory cache. And the size of this cache would be computed dynamically. So when I say dynamically, that means uh, uh, in one of the slides we saw, like uh, while creating the image loader, you can also specify uh, the memory percentage that you want to use uh, as a in-memory cache. And library will use, uh, uh, you know, the percentage of free memory that you specify as uh, you know the size of the in memory cache and if you don't specify anything i think library uses uh, the default percentage i'm not aware about that uh, but yeah if you don't specify it will just use the default uh, percentage so let's see like uh, how image will move from strong to the weak uh, memory cache i think it's just fairly simple if you know the you know uh, lru caching strategy but if you in case if you're not aware i think this will help you to understand that. Uh, so first of all, uh, you request an image one. It's not there in the strong memory cache. It will just store, it, and it will simply return uh, that image. The next time, if you request another, see if it is there. It's not there. It will just store, it, uh, and uh, simply return that. And next time again, uh, it will check cache. It's not there. It will request and will return that. Uh, it will store that in the uh, strong memory cache and it will return that. Now let's say at this point, uh, you know your strong memory cache is full. Uh, and next time, if you are uh, requesting another image, image one would be responsible for moving out from strong to weak, and uh, it will just store the uh, image code in the strong memory cache and will give you that. Yeah, so this is how like things will move from strong to you know uh, weak memory cache. Um, talking about weak memory cache, uh, uh, you know it's backed by HashMap. Internally, it you uh, uses HashMap to uh, store the key and the list of images, uh, and uh, periodically it removes you know after ten set operations, it will just clean up your weak uh, memory cache. Uh, so it maintains one counter uh, internally, and as soon as that counter reaches to you know 10, it will just clear a uh, weak memory cache, and uh, yeah, that's how like basically weak memory cache works under the hood. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this talk. Uh, so kind of uh, you know, uh, I know like it's it's very uh, there's so much to understand. Uh, uh, there are a lot of stuff, uh, but to summarize this talk, uh, I think uh, you know what we saw. Uh, we saw like uh, what is coil exactly? Uh, what are the various reasons why you should consider this library? Then we touched upon you know the API, uh, like how we can utilize Java and Kotlin API, uh, and also we saw like uh, it has support for you know Jetpack Compose. And then we talked about uh, the entire image loading pipeline. And uh, finally, we touch upon you know the in-memory caching. So yeah, uh, this was all about you know coil. Uh, I hope you you know uh, you find it very useful. Uh, uh, finally, I would like to highlight a few resources that I've used to prepare for this talk. Uh, Library has very nice documentation, uh, so you can refer. You know the official documentation, and uh, also if you're a podcast person, uh, the author of this library came into one of the Android backstage podcast uh, and talked about you know the detail about this library. So yeah, if you're a podcast person, you can listen to tune into this podcast. And with that, thank you so much for your time, and I'm happy to take any question if you have. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Sagar. Uh, that was really in insightful session we had. So we have a couple of questions. I'll bring them on stage. You can answer them one by one. Sure. All right. So here's the first question. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
uh, should I read out or like we'll be reading? Yeah, out? You can read out, yeah. Sure. So, coil for uh, jetpack compost. What do you think? Can coil become de facto standard for compost world? That's a good question. I think it's too early to comment on this question. I would say, but seems like uh, I think I'm not sure about other libraries whether other libraries has jetpack compost support. But I think uh, I think this is the first library if I'm not wrong with jetpack compose. So let's just hope for the best. Like this mm -hmm. will be the default uh, de facto you know library when it comes with uh, jetpack compose. But again, not sure. All right, all right. So here's the second question we have. Does it feature a cache for the transform data? Yes. So uh, as we saw, like in these slides, uh, uh, while implementing your own uh, transformation, uh, transformation, uh, it has a method called key. So you need to uh, return that key basically, and to use that key to you know store the the cache for the transformation as well. I'm not wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll take up the next question. Uh, I think most of the people have these questions. So, what are the benefits of coil in comparison to other image loading libraries? So, uh, yeah, I think the fact that it is Kotlin first library, I, I think that's a, a huge uh, selling part of this. Besides that, uh, it's lightweight uh, compared to others. Um, you know, Picasso is also lightweight, but again, that is very minimal library. Uh, so yeah, uh, in terms of feature, I think uh, this is lightweight library. Uh, that's a, a one of the advantage, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next question we have is this one. Can, Can you use, use for, for as a placeholder? Yeah. Uh, Okay, that I'm not sure about that. I hmm. don't think so. Okay. Uh, because placeholder is something which will take uh, you know your uh, local resource as a uh, input. So yeah, I don't think so. This is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, this is the next question. <laughs> Is this image uh, view dot load item used in all cases? Uh, again, I'm not sure about the question exactly, but uh, mm -hmm. if uh, you know, uh, if you're asking about uh, like you always have to do map mapping, uh, it's not mandatory. But however, if you have you know your own custom object uh, and deep down the hierarchy, if you have image source. Uh, then it's it is very useful. Like then it makes sense to you know use mapper and plug in that, but mm -hmm. not uh, in all cases. Like if you have uh, you know uh, image source uh, at the top level, I I don't think so. It makes sense to use mapper. Mm -hmm. so not obvious, yeah. Right. Uh, so we have. I think you already have answered this question, but we can take that as a last question. Uh, is there performing benefit over Glide or Picasso? Interesting. Yeah. So there's very uh, good blog post on this. Uh, I think this is very old though. Uh, again, I'm not sure about the current scenario, but uh, uh, I think one uh, guy wrote a really good blog post on the comparison of uh, Glide, Picasso, and uh, Coil. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, just Google search it. I think it's uh, available on Medium. Uh, but at that time, Coil was lagging behind, you know, Guide and Picasso in terms of speed, uh, as far as I you know. But mm -hmm. I, again, I'm not sure because that is very old blog post, and I'm not sure about the current uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we have one more question. We'll take it as the last one. Mm, yeah. Yes, we have a uh, JIT support uh, for Kyle. Uh, so instead of depending on the base uh, artifact, you have to depend on the JIF artifact. Uh, that will give you support for you know JIF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have um, answered all the questions. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Saga, for the talk.
so it was a uh, really good understanding of the coil library pleasure thanks you for having me thank you see you around there yeah.